tonight on The Profit. Two years ago, I bought an interest in Mr. Green Tea Ice Cream. Well, this is actually amazing. Good. And while we've been able to increase sales by nearly 100%. Is that your car? It's my car. Success has spawned a whole new set of challenges. The entire future of the brand is based off of my vision. That's something I'm not so sure of. The owner's son is pushing for a piece of the pie. I think 7 to 10% would be more than that. But his cavalier attitude isn't helping in this case. Who cares about a $10,000 upfront cost? I think we all kind of care about the $10,000. And now, a family feud is brewing in the business. What's important to me is the most important thing. They don't make any sense. You're making stories up. If I can't help this young man mature as a leader, don't be frustrated. I'm very frustrated. And get both sides back on the same page? It's it's we got, bought, I got this. We I, bought, I, I, you I got, got it? it? Okay. Mr. Green Tea's growth could melt away. If Michael told you that he was going to leave, what would you say to him? I guess I'd ask him when he's leaving. My name is Marcus Lamonis, and I risk my own money to save struggling businesses. We're not going to wake up every morning wondering if we have a job. We're going to wake up every morning wondering how many jobs we have to do. It's not always pretty. Everything's going to change. Everything. But I do it to save jobs, and I do it to make money. This Let's go to work. is the profit. Located in Keyport, New Jersey, Mr. Green Tea Ice Cream is a gourmet ice cream manufacturer with a rich family history. Founded in 1968 by Santo Emanuele, the company is run today by his son Richard, Richard's wife Lori, and son Michael. When I met them in 2013, they were generating $2 million in sales, mainly coming from selling to restaurants. That green tea's good. Isn't that good? And if we hadn't made a deal, $600,000 for 35% of the business, they'd probably still be at the same level. That's because Mr. Green Tea was at a standstill. We physically cannot fill our orders to the distributors. Part of the problem was that Mr. Green Tea didn't have their own manufacturing facility. Instead, it used a co-packer. By paying a third party, Mr. Green Tea was losing about 20% of its potential profit. We've been talking about putting up a new facility for a long time now, and it's just going slower than... I'm not going to put a facility up unless I know we have the business there. But Richard was cautious to a fall. You are strangling the business. Back up. You're crossing the line between father and boss. It was a classic clash of generations, and I was stuck in the middle. How much money does this business need to go to the next level? Whatever it takes to build a facility. Have you looked at any? So we bought an old abandoned warehouse. Whoa. Isn't it beautiful? And we went to work and fixed it up. And that's when I learned that Michael's enthusiasm had a downside. He had severely underestimated the cost. The building isn't going to cost 600000 It's going to cost a million three. It was a mistake. But it's a mistake with my money. I know that. It is never going to happen again. But $1.3 million later, we have a state-of-the-art ice cream factory. This takes a pint, fills it with ice cream, heat seals it, date codes it, and ejects it out the other end. Our sales have more than doubled to about $5 million. And without the drag of a co-packer, we've improved our profits. And we've been able to jumpstart our pint business and sell directly to retailers. And Michael has grown a great deal, too. Look at how different his game is. You really have your act together. Okay, <laughs> very good. But there's a lot more work ahead of us. Good. How are you? I was Good thinking, to this see is you. like our two year anniversary. I know, Did isn't that unbelievable? That? Yes, of course. How you doing, Junior? What's going on? What's happening? Yeah. How come your office is wider than your mother's? <laughs> I designed the building, so. That's okay. He, he honestly spent more time here. How are you doing, Mom? We were just having a we were just having a discussion of how well he's doing. Okay. What I wanted to do is understand how businesses, I really want to focus on the pint business because that was Michael's task. Can we taste some new flavors? I still have not, never gotten a sample of black sesame. Yeah, we can taste black sesame. clear. Good morning. Look how beautiful that is. So remind me, when I met you guys, there was ginger, red bean, and green tea. So these are the originals. Original three. And then Fortune Cookie launched. Black That's the newest. Launched. Then Chai Latte. 
Over the last year, Michael's been responsible to launch the pint business, and he's been developing a lot of the flavors, but I was never consulted on any of them. And my guess is, neither were the customers. I have black sesame. It's very different. Very different. I mean, yeah. you talk about polarizing flavor. Right. I'm getting you don't like it. This has a really strange aftertaste. Never put black in the word, in anything with food. What I would have done is I would have put toasted. toasted. There would be no way I would ever launch it. I didn't encourage you to Empire do that. Personally. Michael's tenacious, you know. But have you had a commercial focus group of black sesame? No. And so, as we launched ginger, chai latte, fortune cookie, and black sesame, we had no testing, no focus groups. Uh, exactly. How has this done in food service? This is not a food service item. This Why not? It just... To get new flavors into the restaurants is very difficult. They want their green tea, red bean, vanilla. That's what they want. Have you introduced that to them? No. Because the restaurants provide some level of feedback. It's always good to sort of get other people's opinions. Sometimes I feel like with Michael, he feels like it's only his that matters. What does it cost to experiment? It's not expensive to just launch a new flavor. It's all cost of goods. You're spending, you know, probably, you know, $10,000 just for that one, which may never work and may sit on all the shelves. So it's a cost of good that if it doesn't work, those goods have no value. Who cares about a $10,000 upfront cost? I think we all kind of care about the $10,000. Of we do. You I'm sorry, $10,000 is not... No, it's, it's not $10,000. You're printing 125000 of these, which is going to run you probably $30,000. So it's $40,000, and if you have two or three that fail, that's a major hit. What about the slotting fee? The slotting fee is the fee that you pay the grocery store to basically buy the shelf space. And how much were the slotting fees? It was $200,000 for six. That's like a real investment. So it's $33,000 a pint. If for some reason this doesn't work out, mm -hmm. how much money between raw ingredients, packaging, and slotting fees? If it ended today? Just failed, failed. Minimum $70,000. So one mistake could be a $70,000 disaster. That's a failure. And I'm worried that we're getting sloppy. Mr. Green Tea makes around $400,000 a year in profit. And to invest almost 20% of your entire earnings for the year in one flavor without being sure it's the right thing, it's like playing Russian roulette. What does it cost you to make this? Everything all in. The packaging is $1.33. Uh-huh. And then what's milk at right now? Just under $8 a gallon. So that means there's 1.25 gallons of milk in there, so 10 bucks. And then your ingredients, which is like 70 cents. $1.33 for the container, $10 for the ice cream, 70 cents for the ingredients. That's $12. Right, right. I, just, milk is high I, right I, I did Michael high because it's extremely high right now. But it changes every week I buy milk. Okay, we'll use 11. Right. What does it cost to deliver it for every one of these? $3. So now I'm at $14. You're selling this for $28? Mm -hmm. So basically I have a 50% margin on this. You may disagree with this, but a 50% margin on this product just isn't good enough. If you're looking at the margins on the two and a half gallon product, just on the surface, they look good. But after you factor in all the labor and the cost of the machinery and the cost to run the business, the margins aren't that great. So 50% is not good enough. We need to be closer to 60 to absorb the labor. In order to drive down the cost or improve the margins, the single biggest ingredient has to be resolved. And that's the cost of the cream. When I can buy my milk right, and I get this down to the $6 range in milk, we're doing this for under nine dollars. Well, I want to get that milk price down. But it fluctuates. Every, the butter I understand, but I want to get some sort of contract price based on volume. I would love to work the numbers with you. Yeah. What I'd like to do is sit down with the financial. Okay. What were our total sales in pints in 2014? Okay. One million six hundred and thirty thousand four hundred and fifty seven okay what's the trend for 2015 probably about uh, 2.3 okay so which means i'm not gonna get a raise january 1st of 16. you were given a grid mm -hmm. and then there was a guarantee established Correct. as well we set up these different tiers zero to two and a half million Two and a half million to three and a half million. Michael's done a pretty good job improving the pint business, but I believe that pay plans drive behavior. 
and performance-based pay plans are exactly what I've set up for Michael. His salary is fixed at $75,000, and he doesn't receive a commission until pint sales achieve a $2.5 million level. And then Michael starts earning a commission of 3.25%, taking him to $81,250, and it stays that way until sales reach $3.5 million, and then his percentage is bumped up to 3.5%, and so on, and he rises along with the business. So that grid was clear. It's a 100% commission plan with a guarantee. Exactly. Okay. The pay plan is, is very good. I'm fortunate to have it. Is it bothersome to me? Yeah, a little bit. Every revenue dollar increase, the benefits are reaped by the people that have the piece of the pie. I want a piece of it. I, I want skin in the game. Employment does not equal um, I agree. It's two completely ownership. separate things. It just doesn't. That, that's not fair to me. I have zero protection when I spent my career here, all right? I'm a mechanical engineer. I could go do anything I want tomorrow. Meaning that if you don't like the sort of plan that's Correct. Right in front of you. Correct. I could go do something else. Hey YouTube fans, I'm Landon Downey from CNBC. Thanks so much for checking out our channel. Here you'll find videos packed with all the info that you need to be smarter about your finances. Be sure and subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me to see CNBC's original series, Young Money, Tech Bet, Kramer's Mad Money, and all the latest from CNBC.